JP Morosi, our international inside corner, is killing it, if we do say so <laughs> ourselves. Good morning. I saw DJ LeMahieu yesterday behind me. He was running the bases. He was swinging the bat. Aaron Boone said he could be back today, but he's kind of pushing for Friday with that extra day off. How close to 100% will he be, do you think? Well, Lauren, that's the key question here. DJ LeMay, who's been dealing with a toe issue for a number of weeks now, and it certainly has hampered his ability to get back on the field. And as Aaron Boone has described it, as, as you know well, too, that the Yankees basically have to figure out what they can do with DJ, the balance of the season. And that begins with him getting back on the field in a game situation and seeing his pain tolerance, seeing what he's able to do in terms of uh, having a base on that foot to swing from and the Yankees and Aaron Boone they basically said they're going to try to find the most optimal way to test it over the balance of the regular season and see if they can get that foot ready to a spot where he's able to contribute offensively during the postseason and it's really become a pain tolerance question and a question of how much weight and how much force he can put on that foot to be able to hit so we know Lauren from having watched the Yankees all season long they're a different team when he is in the lineup, and I think they're just going to now take a, a, a opportunity to medically and, and from a baseball perspective see what he can do over the next week and then make a decision on the playoff roster from there. Uh, day by day, but they're certainly running out of time. Tony Gonsolin, JP, explain this to me. I know about the forearm strain. He pitched a rehab start, and everyone said from what I was reading that the velo is just a tick off the average. In what capacity are we going to see him? Does, does Dave Roberts think he's going to start a postseason game? Well, Lauren, that is a key question right now for the Los Angeles Dodgers. At the moment, it looks as though the top three spots in their rotation are solidified for the playoffs, and that if Gonsolin can get himself built back up, that he could potentially have a game four start, as Jack Harris has written in the Los Angeles Times. But to your point, Lauren, if the velo is down, last night he, he threw only two innings, you start to wonder, is he able to get out to, to four or five innings to start a postseason game? I would point out that the Dodgers in the postseason, we've seen this many times, they are comfortable with starters going four innings, five innings. They have not been a team that's had their starters going eight and nine innings in, in playoff games because they want to make sure that they can leverage their bullpen and they don't tax their their starters too much early on in a postseason run. So I would expect if Gonsolin can show, Lauren, that he can get up to three or four or five innings with good velocity, he could earn himself a start, but that is far from assured. And if he does get a start in the division series, it is almost certain to be game four to give him the most amount of time possible sure. to recover. And you may have guys like Urias and Kershaw and Anderson starting the first three. And that sets him up pretty well. Dodgers cruising into October despite it all. I feel like I know better than to ask this question for your predictions. No offense. Even though you went to Harvard, it's not your strength. Okay? We saw Pete Alonso <laughs> go deep. <laughs> You're laughing. You know it's true. NL MVP, where are you at right now, JP? Lauren, we, we still have a lot of great candidates here where we've got a week or so to go. And, and if I was a voter right now, I think I would still lean to one of the two Cardinals, Arnato or Goldschmidt, but Alonzo is making a case. Freddie Freeman is making a case. Manny Machado is making a case. Uh, you see Alonzo there among the candidates. Of course, uh, Schwarber has more home runs than Alonzo does. It maybe is not quite in the MVP conversation at the moment, but Alonzo is, it has the most home runs on that board. Number 40 last night, certainly part of the conversation. The Cardinals, though, with what they've done in the second half and Arenado's defense at third, Goldschmidt's cooled off a little bit. I, I think I would lean toward toward one of the St. Louis guys at the moment, but I, I see no wrong answers here. I think, Lauren, there are still as many as potentially a half dozen legitimate candidates for this award, and, and uh, Alonzo's put together a tremendous year. I do think that we'll wait and see how the division race plays out. If, if the Mets win the division, and of course, as we know, it's tied at the moment, if Alonzo vaults them into a, a division title over the last week, I think just given how close some of these races are right now in the National League, Lauren, that we could we could see if Machado is the is the deciding factor in why the Padres make uh, make the playoffs. <laughs> I, I am one of those voters that can be swayed by team success okay. in the last week or so. So I I would say it's all in front of them with a slight edge right now to the Cardinals uh, the Cardinals duo. Nothing wrong with that. This is why we love the game, right? Race is coming down to the That's wire. Right. JP Morosi on the inside corner with an Thanks, aggressive Lord. microphone. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs>